Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dominic, I'm the host of the Android Factory. As we can see here, we have a screen with a lot going on here. We have some horizontal scroll inside of a vertical scroll. We even have sticky headers here that sit at the top for the different seasons. And this is basically describing all of the different episodes that this particular character is a part of. We're reusing some components that we've used in the past, and there's a lot to cover here, so let's just jump right in. All right, folks, and here we go. We have reverted our character episode screen to what it was before. Uh, we just get to that simply by clicking the view all episodes. Took a screenshot here of what that screen looked like so we can get back to it, but we'll see we have a title here, you know, the, the name of the character, horizontally scrolling list, some images or a single image, and then a uh, a, a list of content separated by season. Uh, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it here. We have the remote episode. We have the episode here, our network and domain models. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button to help me out. And we'll see here in the documentation that we have uh, this as our model for a single episode. So we have an ID, the name, the air date, this episode key that you know kind of configures what season and episode within that season it was. We'll use that in a little bit. Uh, and, and all that stuff is kind of encapsulated inside of our remote episode class, at least the stuff that we care for, and then our episode class here, the domain layer uh, for just what we what we want to display in the UI. Uh, we also have a two domain episode function here. We see we have a season number and an episode number in our domain uh, model, but we did only have a singular string that represented something, right, that looked like SO3. Uh, episode seven. So this logic here is going to filter out everything that is a digit. Then we take the first two for our season number. That will be this stuff. And then uh, the last two here uh, for our episode number, which are these two. Uh, so it you know, might not be bulletproof code, but it's an interesting use case for take and take last. So I wanted to show it to you. Uh, you know, a couple other interesting bits bits of information here to kind of just map from network to domain, but nothing too crazy. Last thing I want to mention here is the episode row component here. We have, uh, you know, this nice little UI that we've built out here that looks like it is repeated over here. Just built that out off screen, nothing too crazy. It's just a little bit of compose work. You can fetch all this code on GitHub yourself to check it out, uh, you know, but just wanted to make that off screen because it's not super interesting. Our character episode screen here is the composable that we see in the emulator. And uh, let's just go ahead and think about how we need to get back to this area. So we do need to get back to this UI that has a character here and then all of the episodes. Unfortunately, the episodes is not on the character, but we have a list of IDs that any character was a part of. And that works to our advantage because on the episode uh, documentation, we have a way to get multiple episodes. So we can pass in on the episode uh, you know, uh, endpoint here, a singular, you know, just 10 for getting episode 10 or a comma separated list of however many episodes we want to get. So we have that information on the character. So we first need to fetch the character, then we can fetch all of their episodes, and then we can put this entire screen back together. Previously, we've built out in our Ktor client a way to get our particular character. So let's just go ahead here and update this, uh, you know, client to have a little bit more functionality to get the episodes that we care for. So quite simply here, we're going to create a new function and get episodes. We're going to take in a list of integers that are the episode IDs we care for, and we're going to return a list of episodes here. We're going to do something quite similar to how this functions. So we're just going to copy and paste and change it around. We obviously are not going to hit the character endpoint. Instead, we're going to hit the episode endpoint. We'll need to fix that momentarily. Our body is not going to be a remote character. It's going to be a list of remote episodes. And with that, we don't have a two domain character. We're not caching this at the moment. So what we're going to do here is we're going to map each one of these remote episodes to a domain episode. That's going to generate here the list of episodes instead of the list of remote episodes that we get back from the API. We obviously need to sort this parameter here. So we're going to say, um, we'll say IDs comma separated. And we'll set that equal to our episode IDs. There's a nifty function here called join to string and we can pass in our separator. So this is going to create one string from a list of integers with this as the you know separator or the delimiter, whatever it is in between all of the different values in that list. Then we could just simply pass that in. So now we're gonna have our comma separated list coming after uh, our episode part of the path there, and that's gonna link up to the endpoint that we need to hit. Perfect, so we now have a way to get a particular episodes based on the list. So let's bounce back to our character episode screen. 
change this around here, we have a character ID passed into us, but we're also gonna need our Ktor client. So we're just simply gonna request that and we're going to pass this in like such. Eventually we'll get into dependency injection and better conversations around architecture. So don't worry about that, but we are gonna go ahead and create a uh, character state here. This is going to be the, I remember our mutable state of, we're going to take a nullable character, of course, and then we're going to default it to null, do all of our imports and reformat some things here. And great, now we have our character state that this composable is gonna operate off of. We're gonna have our launched effect here with our key being unit to just have it happen once. And then inside of here, we're gonna create our network call to actually get the character. If you've been following along with the series here, you know that we did implement a caching layer in the last episode. Uh, so this should happen, this should return immediately uh, in our case, as far as when we navigate from the character detail screen to this screen. But in the event, let's say we're able to deep link to this screen or something along those lines, this will take care of actually fetching the character from the API and then handling our different situations from there. We're gonna uh, go ahead and handle this later in a better architecture discussion episode and just worry about our success case. So our character state is going to equal it and we'll rename it to character because we are uh, you know, good coders and such. And now we have, uh, you know, this state here that we can go ahead and build something off of. Because we have this state being nullable, let's just go ahead and apply our let uh, block. We're gonna call our loading state if we are null, which is just gonna, uh, you know, be a little loading spinner at this point. And then I think I'm just gonna create another little composable down here. Let's just call this, I don't know, main screen because we will pass in the non-null character at that point. We'll make this private, of course, and we will call main screen character equals it. And like I said before, we're gonna go ahead and rename some things because why not? Readability. And then the benefit here is that inside of this composable, we don't have to worry about any nullability and all that kind of stuff. So we just have our characters here. We're gonna go ahead and throw this inside of a lazy column, delete that and open us up like this. And then let's see, what was that at the top? We had our uh, character name component. The name of the character is coming off the character, character name. And then let's go ahead and just put a little bit of a spacer there, height. And then we had our character image composable there. Our image URL is coming from the character just like that. And then we can go ahead and rerun some things here. Uh, and see how it all looks. So we're gonna open up Beth Smith, we'll click view all episodes, and at this point here, the screen is starting to come back together. Go ahead and rerun things here, setting our content padding here to be uh, set to 16. We'll now see that everything kind of comes off the edges of the screen, 16 dp, giving it that nice little bit of uh, breathing room that we like to see. All right, cool. So it doesn't look exactly the same, but we're getting there. We're gonna worry about this little horizontal scrolling bit in the next episode. And for now, we're just gonna get our episodes on screen. So uh, we can go ahead and make use of our, ooh, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, we can go ahead and make use of our get episodes function that we had uh, created before. And in order to do that, we need to actually launch a network call, a coroutine, after we get our one character back. Right? So once we have our character, we can actually get all of the different episodes for that. We can go ahead and say character.episodeIDs, which is the list of IDs that character is a part of. And we have our different cases here for on success and on failure. I'm gonna go ahead and obviously handle this later, but then we have our episodes at this point. Perfect, and inside this on success block here, we can go ahead and do whatever we want with those episodes. But we do see that we are calling something that is suspending from a non-suspending context, so we're simply just gonna copy that paste it inside of a launch block inside of the coroutine scope that we are a part of, and all is good here. We can go ahead and duplicate this. It's not gonna be the character state, it's going to be the episodes state. It's gonna be a mutable state of a list of episodes, and instead of null, we're gonna to default to an empty list. And then inside of here, we're simply just going to say our episode state equals episodes. Perfect. So now we are fetching our character. We're fetching the episodes for that character. We're doing so in a, 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 unfortunately, we have to do it in a sequential manner, but we are doing it in a reactive approach here with our by remember mutable state of, and then we're just going to update our composable down here 
to take in that those episodes that we just fetched. So we'll take in the episodes that way. We're going to say episodes equals our episode state. So let's start with the obvious answer here. We're going to call items with our collection here. We're going to iterate over our collection. Uh, and inside of this Lambda block, we're going to basically be able to build a composable with each episode. Of course, we rename uh, it here because we are good. And then this is where that episode row component is going to come in handy. We're just simply going to call it already built out. It takes the episode that we have here and we can go ahead and just like that rerun some things. I know I built this off camera, so let me know if you want to see some of that content on uh, on screen, but really it's nothing too crazy. It's really just a couple, you know, rows and text views and columns and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, we are seeing a little bit of the screen come back together here, right? We, we obviously have a couple issues to sort out, but we do see that we are uh, displaying all of the content on screen here. So if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate a like, subscribe if you are brand new, comment down below, real fan. Just let me know that you made it all the way through most of the content here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and clean things up a tiny bit. And we're going to make it such that we can inject the headers uh, into this list here, right? Much like in this uh, screenshot here, we have these different, you know, season headers inside of uh, the list here. But that information isn't actually described in our list, right? We just have a list of episodes. And it's us, up to us to figure out how and where to inject those different header components. So what we can do here is instead of calling the items.episode, we can call episodes and we will say group by it.season number, right? Remember when we pulled that out and then we can iterate over all of these, which is going to be a mapping of integer comma list of episodes. And the integer here is going to be the season that all of these episodes in the list are a part of. I don't really have a good name for this one. So map entry is what it's going to be. But first, we're going to add in our header component here. And then we can call something like this, the items, except instead of episodes, we're going to say map entry dot value, which is going to be the list of episodes that we care for. Let me just build this real quick for us. All right, folks, and here we have it. We have our group by we're adding in the season header to start. And then we're going to go ahead and iterate over all the episodes, the value of that map entry. Here, we just simply have a nice clean text composable to just, you know, output some information and make it look like how it did before. Rerunning on the emulator here, we can go ahead and see that we start to see those uh, season headers injected in between all of the relevant areas, right? Perfect, exactly the way that we want it. Obviously, we can clean up a little bit of padding and such, but we'll see right after episode 11, in between episode one, it's because it obviously goes to the second season. Let me just clean up some of this padding here and we should be in good shape. All right, folks, and rerunning things here, we have this screen looking pretty good, to be honest. Uh, really not that bad at all. Um, we have our different headers injected here. We have some spacing that makes it look pretty reasonable. Could we perfect it a little more? Sure, maybe, you know, pull the code, do it yourself if you want to change something around. But uh, the last little bit that we don't have at the moment is at the top, we'll see season three just scrolls right off the screen in the previous, um, you know, demo in the beginning of the video. We did have sticky headers here, so we can clean that up pretty quickly here. If we take a look at our season header component here that we're uh, that, that we're adding in, we have an item here, we literally need to change that to sticky header, we will get this uh, little error here to basically opt in to the experimental API for that little bit of functionality. And we can go back to our screen here, we as we start to scroll off the screen, we now see a very nice UI bug that <laughs> I guess I overlooked, but we really just need to clean up that background and uh, the stickiness is going to work just fine. Give me one second. All right, folks, in rerunning things, we simply just put a background on that text element go ahead and scroll the screen here. And we now will see that, you know, there is no more transparency. The content does not scroll behind it uh, or it is scrolling. You just can't really see it. And then we'll see here the nice interaction of the two sticky headers kind of pushing one above uh, and out of the view. And then, um, you know, that kind of just repeats there. So that's pretty nice if you ask me. Although it does look a little tight here, so I'm just gonna clean something up real quick on the padding. All right, folks, and we just went ahead and just changed around just the text element to basically be wrapped in a row so that we can apply the padding to the row as well. So that if we look very closely here, we see that the uh, sticky header is a little bit further from the top and then 
the text there starts to get cut off 16 dp away from the sticky header uh, as opposed to just underneath that line there for season one so it just makes it look a little bit cleaner in my opinion you can always add like a nice little gradient at the bottom if you really want to make it look like it's disappearing into the abyss and things along those lines but uh, if you made it this far in the video thank you so much you really are a trooper let me know how i'm doing in the comments below we're going to go ahead in the next episode build out this little bit up here that does have that horizontal scroll uh, and then we'll just, I don't know, continue building out some other things. So I'll uh, catch you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for following along.